For Kruma Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sadna, here to unpack his column titled The Contribution of the UDF and People's Power to Our Understandings of Freedom, Part 1. So why do you criticize the lack of interpretation of the UDF period? And what do you mean about the UDF period combining what was orthodox with what was new? Well, when we are dealing with anniversaries, it is a cause for celebration in the case of the UDF. But we need to understand what it is that we are celebrating. Because when we don't articulate that, we don't draw lessons for the present. And one of the reasons for reading history is not just that it's interesting, but that it has a bearing on our lives today. So consequently, I believe it's very important that in addition to celebrating and being happy in thinking back about 40 years, that we ask ourselves, what was it that we didn't take from that period that would be useful today? What was it from that period that we have taken that has been unfortunate if that is the case? You also asked me about the UDF combining orthodoxy and new things. Now, the period of the UDF had what is what we call people's power, and that led to notions of democracy in the there and now, not waiting for the day when we would all vote, because this was in the 80s. But at the same time, there was orthodoxy in that the uh, notion of people's power said that the people shall govern didn't only mean waiting for the moment of voting, it meant street committees in a whole lot of ways where people took control of their lives. But at the same time, there were people busy with insurrection and talking about the transfer of power, meaning that we would have power on one day of one decisive moment when we won power from the apartheid regime. So that was the orthodoxy, but the practice on the ground was different from the orthodoxy. So that the way in which we acted was actually a rereading of some of what we'd inherited from the 1950s. I quote Dorothy Nyembe, who spent 18 years in prison, uh, worked with Comrade Chief Lutuli, late Chief Lutuli, our late president, um, saying, singing a song about Dr. Dadu, Chief Lutuli, Dr. Naika leading us to Parliament, as it, meaning that that was the notion of freedom. But in the 1980s, we went beyond this. So there was a coexistence of orthodoxy and new things that people were actually doing. And how did the UDF period revise the meaning of the Freedom Charter? When we spoke of the first clause of the Freedom Charter saying the people shall govern, we understood it as some distant period. We, we thought maybe we will never live to see the day when the people shall govern because we understood the people shall govern uh, almost exclusively as voting for a parliament that represented all the people of South Africa. Now, the unions uh, were not waiting for that moment. They actually understood that they had to make their future in the present. Uh, Stephen Friedman wrote a book called Building Tomorrow Today. So the unions were, were not waiting for that day when the people took power. Uh, in uh, or seized power or transferred power. They believed that they could change the conditions of their lives there and then. So they were already doing it, although they didn't call it people's power. So that what I'm saying is when street committees, popular forms of uh, resolving 
conflicts, when they drove the apartheid regime out of the townships, the Bantu administration out of the townships. They, in Port Alfred, for example, they built, built a crash where uh, the Bantu administration department had been. Now, in doing all these things, they were taking charge of their own lives. And the former minister of police, Minister Lachansi, said this was very dangerous, that people should form an alternative power to the state of the day. So that there was a rereading of the Freedom Charter in the sense that the people shall govern was, and I quote Weza Made, a Juden Hague activist, as saying, when we act now, in our street committees, we are implementing the Freedom Charter. And I asked him, do people understand that they're doing it? He says, yes, they understand the people shall govern. Also, Raymond, on representative democracy, you hoover over its importance, though you concede it was a long-standing demand to get the vote. Then again, you quote Claudi Oge saying it's a contradiction in terms. So what exactly is your position? The original meaning of democracy from Aristotle and Athenian times, ancient Greece, was that the people would directly govern. So consequently, when you have a representative democracy introduced in the United States, uh, it was in a sense a curbing of the popular voice because until the time of the United States Constitution, the only meaning that people understood for democracy was direct popular involvement. And that's why Claude Arke says that the notion of representative democracy is a contradiction in terms. However, what I'm saying in the article is that for us in South Africa, representative democracy, everyone having the vote, was a great victory for the people. And it was something, it's called universal adult suffrage. And African men and women were referred to by whites as boys and girls. So it was an affirmation of their adulthood and the universality of freedom. And in the context of them having no say in their own lives, getting the vote was a great victory. And... John Hoffman and Paul Graham, I quote there as well, saying that even in Athens, direct democracy was not as pure as some people make out because some things were delegated to a certain authority to handle in ancient Greece. So it was not as absolute as, as some people make out. So that we must value representative democracy, but the idea that they advance is that you are representing, you are trying to be there in the place of your constituents. You must imagine what they want you to be saying as if they were there. So it's got to be done in a way that is consciously trying to have the voice of the people heard and present in wherever you represent them. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's polity about the contribution of the UDF and people's power to our understandings of freedom at one.